telling you is what we're talking about. If and only if vi transpose a vj is equal to zero. Yeah? This has a name. It's called conjugacy, surprisingly enough. Right? So we're going to say that two vectors v and w are a conjugate if v transpose times a times w equals zero. In other words, secretly, if I Cholesky factorized A, I could get to two orthogonal search directions on this F bar. Yeah? Hopefully that parses. And now, what do you think uh, is a nice little uh, corollary of this previous lemma we had? Remember the, 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 the lemma that we proved is that this function F bar, right, this thing that just minimizes the, the distance to, to Y star, the, the optimum, right, that function can be minimized in n steps just by moving along orthogonal directions, right? And we did that just by moving along the coordinates. And then I argue to you that a line search on f bar is the same as a line search on f, right? When, once, we trans once we go from the, the w's to the v's. So in particular, what happens if I have n a conjugate vectors? And I line search along just from one to the next. Well, I claim to you that if I take n vectors v, which are a conjugate, Right? So vi transpose times a times vj, or i not equal to j, is equal to zero. Yeah? Then if I line search our original function f along these a conjugate directions, then in n steps I have to hit the, 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 the minimum. Does this make sense? Because secretly, what's going on is in this rotating space where life is easy and, 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 and matrices are well conditioned, uh, and, and steps all of them moving in n orthogonal directions, and we prove that this guy converges. Yeah? So, what is our, our job now? Our job is to find n a conjugate directions. Right? Because the second we do, we have that nice uh, line search formula for alpha, and we can just apply it n times when we solve our system. Yeah? Without ever having to apply Gaussian elimination or anything else. Unfortunately, this isn't obvious how to do this. In particular, yeah, well, right, so, so, sorry, I'll pause for a second. We have the, 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 we, we, the sequence descent might not be the fastest descent globally. <coughs> we showed that the sequence descent can actually be quite slow. And that we sort of have two different dot products, right? We have the, the usual dot product, v dot w, and now we have this new guy, which we used to introduce the idea of conjugacy, which we're going to call the a inner product, right? So we have this bracket, and we just stick a between v and w. So, hopefully you guys agree with me now that if I can identify n directions that are all a conjugate, then solving ax equals b is easy, right? I just, I line search <coughs> along each of these directions, and then I've proven that this will give me exactly the solution to my linear system. In fact, this is nice, right? It shows that, that, that methods based on conjugate vectors don't run forever. They actually terminate. These are polynomial time algorithms. So, yeah, so our new problem is to actually find these a conjugate directions. Right? I haven't told you how to do that. And so the initial question you might ask is, well, when we talked about QR, right, we had Gram-Schmidt, we had Householder, we had uh, Gibbons and Rotation. Actually, we didn't have those, but we could have. And all of these were different strategies that just took some random set of vectors and made them orthogonal. Right? And you'll show in your homework that, in fact, you can take Gram-Schmidt and use it to make vectors a orthogonal. But this is a little bit of a problem. Because, for one thing, we already know that Gram-Schmidt isn't particularly stable. Well, hopefully that's like something that's ingrained by now. But even that aside, with each iteration of, your, of, our, of our conjugate method, we're going to have to store more and more things. Does this make sense? So first I randomly generate some search direction, and I, and I minimize that this formula for alpha. Now I randomly generate some new search direction. But before I can use it, I have to project out all the old ones. That's what Gram-Schmidt says. Yeah? So I can do that, but now, in the third iteration, I have to store the first two iterates in order to do that. In the fourth iteration, I have to store the first three search directions, because I have to project them all out. Right? So that is, with each iteration of an algorithm like this, it gets slower and slower and slower, which somehow isn't so great. And in particular, once you're really close to a minimum of, of, of our function f, you expect convergence to actually be better, right? Because you're somehow, this, this function f is easy. You're, you're, you're near the optimal point. So we can get one more clue, and then we're going to stop for the day. So, so let's define uh, the residual. Remember, these are going to be b minus ax. But now we're going to have search directions that aren't the residual. So we're going to call the residual r instead of d. Oops. We can prove a formula, which actually gives us an iterative update 
for the residual for any line search along a direction V. Oh, shoot, I missed that. Oh, I'm going to go like two and a half minutes over, and then we'll stop. I apologize. You have to go to the Soviet so Okay. So in particular, the next residual, R k plus 1, right? So he's equal to B minus A x k plus 1, right? That's just by definition of what the residual is. But if we're doing line search, then we have a formula for the next A, right? Or the next x, rather. He's x k plus alpha k plus 1 d k plus 1. Right? So I just did line search along D to get the new guy. So I take the old guy and I add the line search. Right? Well, let's regroup a little bit. In particular, B minus A x k. Well, that's just the last residual. That's R k. Right? Minus A times uh, V k plus 1. I guess all that times alpha k. Yeah? In particular, remember if we did gradient descent, this guy was equal to RK. Yeah? It won't be in a minute, but it was, it was for gradient descent. Well, this proves a nice, uh, a nice formula, which is that the span of the set of residuals from step 0 to set K, step K, in gradient descent is contained, or is actually equal to the span of the first residual, <coughs> plus the a times the first residual, plus a squared times the first residual, all the way up to a to the k times the first residual. Why is that? Well, look what happened. I took the last residual, and I multiplied it by a, and then I just added it to something. Yeah? And each, so each time I do this, I, I incur another a. So and, and when, I, when I undo this, this formula recursively, I get cards of a. Yeah? This story looks familiar. Right? Remember when we were talking about uh, eigenvalue methods? We have these Krylov spaces. Right, Krolov spaces where you took a, a vector, and then an a times a vector, and then a squared times a vector, and then a cubed times a vector, and somehow this, this starts to encode the eigenstructure of your matrix. Right, when we talk about power iteration. In fact, conjugate gradients is nothing more than a Krolov subspace method. But there's an issue which I'll leave you to think about for next time. So remember that the, the direction that we step in is just equal to our residual in gradient descent. Right, that much we know. And I just told you the residual is in the span of, uh, of the first guy, a times the first guy, and so on. Right? So that means after k iterations, right, basically we're, we're at some point x0 plus b, and b is in the span of, of all of the, the residuals we've seen so far, kind of by definition. Right? What would be nice is if we could show that, in fact, in the space of residuals we've seen so far, we're optimal. Right? That is, if we could take any displacement from x0, we'll call it displacement v, right? and, and the v is constrained to be in the subspace of search directions that we've had so far, and we'd like it to be the global minimum of f restricted to that space. But sadly, gradient descent does not have this property. So what we'd like is uh, for this property to hold, and we know that if it does hold, that our algorithm will converge at n steps. Right? Because what happens in the nth iteration? Well, you have n linearly independent vectors, right? So in particular, v can be any displacement that it wants to be. So, so, so this is just going to zip to the minimum of f, yeah? So an algorithm that just successful, successively makes larger and larger subspaces that it's searching in, and each time reaches the global minimum, you know we'll, we'll converge in a finite number of steps. <coughs> but gradient descent doesn't do that. So here is our evidence so far. We know conjugate gradients converges in n steps. We've written another thing that if we could find directions, convergence and n steps. And we're going to try and put the two together. And what's going to come out is a conjugate gradient algorithm. And the really surprising fact, right? In fact, we could do this in n steps simply by taking r0, a r0, a squared r0, and so on, and running Gram Schmidt on it. Right? That would be like kind of the stupid way to do this, but you could. We're going to find that, in fact, Gram Schmidt, in this one particular case, takes constant time. This is very surprising. Not at all obvious. So that's what we're going to start with on uh, Wednesday. And uh, from there, we're going to show some extensions of algorithm preconditioning and, and what to do when, uh, when, when A is not symmetric and positive and definite. Cool. So if somebody could hit the camera, uh, we'll call it a day. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, by the way, so. Uh,